this is Imelda Marcos, and she was the wife of Ferdinand Marcos, who was uh, the ex-dictator of the Philippines. And um, a lot of money was missing when he left office. And she was famous for buying uh, three, over 3,000 shoes. Those were my type, yeah. you know, when they were despots or criminals, because that's a real Rubik's Cube. During the Marcos years, the Philippines had to support one of the most corrupt regimes in modern history. But the blame lay with the dictator's glamorous wife Imelda, the Iron Butterfly, as much as with Marcos himself. Apart from the 3,000 pairs of shoes, 508 gowns Imelda stacked away, she and her husband Ferdinand are estimated to have salted away perhaps billions from the Filipino economy during their 20-year rule. We're entering Imelda's abode, her humble abode, because she was in a, her townhouse. Okay. Gracias, amigo. <laughs> Buenos dias. Why am I speaking Spanish? How do we know where we're going? Here. I knew that I had 10 minutes with her. Is she friends with the neighbors? Yeah. She, she, does she go over there and borrow like milk? Do shoes play an important role in your life, Imelda? You think that's a bad first question? This is a Pizarro, a little-known artist, methinks. I was really yapping it when she came in and highly overexcited. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Thank right. you very much. She was correct. She what? said, what a lovely lady. Oh, no, and I what heard you privilege. were very pretty. This is uh, very overwhelming. I know. She's playing humble. And I had to get right in there. See, because they never gave you credit, if you pardon my interruption, mm -hmm. for the good things you did. Well, I, I thought she's kind of a narcissist, so she's sort of thinking, I guess, you agree with me. We've come to honor her. That's, we've flown there, and we're honoring her, and that's very clear, that anything she says is, is a jewel. Marcos was a great uh, Democrat, a great uh, freedom fighter, and uh, 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 a great liber uh, um, libertarian. Uh, a libertarian, but and then uh, uh, a humanist. And uh, Why did he get so misunderstood? This is what we want to know. What karma, you do believe in karma, happened to you no, that it's you not, would be so in, punished? In, in the case of Marcos, it's not, uh, it was not really the karma, because karma is something that comes back. Well, it also you. means you must have done something terrible for you to be punished this much. You perceive people uh, in a different way because you come from the East. And uh, oh, from think, the West. You think and from the East, West, we think of your husband in different terms no, than they do uh, from the East? There is, there is a misperception. Like, for instance, there are, it is true right now, let us say, it is 12 a.m. In, in the Philippines. Right. But it is 12 p.m. In, in America. Yes. It's a completely, and yet it is true that it is so at a given time. Melda's playing with relativity and truth now. That's narcissism in its pure form. Whatever she believes, there is no doubt. Ferdinand claimed that he discovered the so-called Yamashito gold in the Filipino jungle, hidden there by Japanese generals in 1946. It was this legend that he used for his excuse for being so rich. The old gold bullion was covered with lead. Right. And, and the, the walls of the house that the you house, moved in yes. were built, were made out of this stuff? Yes. Everything is wrong with this picture. Why would the man be hiding the gold? Why would the house be made of gold? I, I, I tore it down, not knowing what was in there, uh, because I wanted the house to be, to be um, spacious. So one day, Melvin, let me get and this then straight. One you got a hacksaw I, I, and I you started the, hacking the walls down? I had it all out <laughs> that day. He said, where is the wall? He was so scared. I said, I threw it out. And then he said, uh, where? So he ran there, and to, to my surprise, it was gold bullions that was covered with lead. That was the way it was before. So all the rooms were partitioned by actual yes, gold cover. It must have been hard to hack. And, when and, you were hack, picture hanging, you yes. never hit anything there? She's no. convinced herself that the house was made out of lead, and behind it was the gold. And if you gave her a lie detector test, she'd pass. They convince themselves that that's the truth. So she doesn't know she's done anything wrong. I can feel my happiness. It's just happiness to be with somebody so uh, multidimensional. This would make my life. Yes. Can I see your shoes? We were desperate for her to sing, having flown all the way to the Philippines. She didn't want to sing. She has a whole closet full of wedding dresses. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you put on the wedding dresses? But when she said, oh, no, we'll do it tomorrow, I thought, yep, we're in. Once you're past your 10 minutes and you're still flirting, then you're kind of, it's like getting your foot in the door. 
and then we're in. Good evening. I'd now like to introduce my very special guest, ladies and gentlemen, Madame Imelda Marcos. How did we do this? How did we do this? Oh, mercy, don't you do this? Oh, my God. I mean, there were all these despots. She doesn't realize we're taking the piss. What did she think I was doing? She's invited me over to the house where her and Ferdinand lived before she moved into the palace. She no longer stays here, as she told me it breaks her heart to remember the days where they lived as a young couple. She's so sentimental. You know those photos that you see in the Inquirer, where you see a mass of bodies that have just been gunned down? That's what this house has the feel of. This is me! What did Imelda do? She put a spear through my teeth. There's me. It's not a good picture. I'm much more attractive in real life. Oh, and here's Imelda. I'll just hold it. I'll see if she notices. This is one of the weirdest things in my life, is that when we went to that second house, in her trash can was a copy of Hello! magazine with me on the front. It wasn't even current. And somebody had drawn with a Sharpie a spear through my face. I did not plant this magazine here, by the way. I thought you did. No, it was here. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. I saw this. I saw this. <laughs> She saw the jewels and she saw I was pretty decked out, but once she found Hello! magazine, I could have come in a paper bag. She loved fame. She was addicted to it. That's why she collected all those, you know, celebrities who ditched her the minute it went the other way. I'm famous for my shoes. I think you should come out of the closet. I don't know. Fame is an illness. It's an illness. You know, you catch it, it you don't get rid of it. It's really fun, like probably, you know, any drug. But when you start to withdraw, you know, when people stop calling, it's a heavy weight, you know, that people kill themselves, people go on to drugs. And she was still, she was still looking for the, the hit. She wanted the hit, and when she found out I was a celebrity, she got her hit. There's been attempts at settlement by both parties. Yeah. Because after 10 years, this Marcus thing should be all behind right. us and we what can move forward. What we're talking about is that the Philippine government would like some of the five billion that's missing back or they say is missing. In April 1990, an attempt was made to convict Mrs. Marcos of concealing a large part of that money in American real estate. The prosecution said Mrs. Marcos treated the New York branch of the Philippine National Bank as her own personal piggy bank. But after three months, she was acquitted. And those are the 350,000 documents presented by the prosecution during her trial in New York. Oh, really? Saying this is amazing. Says, no, they were saying why she's guilty. And then they acquitted her anyway. Scotch tape. Is this what, you get? Is this what they claim the five yeah. billion went to? Yeah, scotch tape. That's a lot of scotch tape. Glue. Glue. Oh, yeah. This oh, is unbelievable. Is These are like prints of checks, copies of checks. Oh, that's fabulous. This is like the Turin Shroud of checks. I think I know why she got off your photocopy stunk. <laughs> I think that's why she got off. Who could read any of these checks? If you guys had a decent photocopy machine, the woman would be behind bars today. I've sorted it out, haven't I? <laughs> and she works for her. What do they think I'm saying? I mean, the nerve. It's like bullfighting. Nobody can tell what I'm actually saying. What did they think I was doing when I was looking at her accounts? Why didn't somebody call the police and shoot me? Isn't that incredible? Chain gold, stick pins gold, Rolex watch, price six million four hundred and twelve thousand. I no. Get in trouble for this. Here's ring, 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 and this bill is for one hundred forty-nine thousand. Wow. Ear clip mountings, one thousand seven hundred. Why would you keep the accounts? Unless, um, are you proud of? Does she go in there and leaf through how much she paid for a watch? We will never know. Do you know where the money is? Yeah. Where is it? Uh, Switzerland, I guess. That's what they say. But they haven't proven anything. I don't think it's her. I would have been a good prosecutor. It's probably the Filipino people's money. He's indicting himself with every line. 
it, that's what I can't believe. What are they thinking? So there's all the money she spent. He says it's in Switzerland. Then I say, is it really in Switzerland? Yeah, but it's not hers, it's the people. Well, that means, and here's the accounts. Am I crazy or are they? Do you know when you think I, reality's just um, been pulled out from under me? If I was Filipino, I'd be upset. There's a few times in my life where I guess it's like when somebody hits gold and they're gold mining, that was finding her accounts and looking where the money went. And they're letting me. That's a moment. Ever since Imelda saw me on the cover of Hello, I have become her best friend. Kiddish and breathlessly childlike, she invites me upstairs to see the bedrooms. No one's ever gone there before. Wow. From then on, I was on her lap. She was feeding me cake. Then I was, then we had bonded. Of course, she'd let me into the attic. That's the attic, really. Oh, please, can we go off? But it's a mess. It's I a want to see a mess. Everything's too, been too neat. I remember I wasn't sure what we were going to find out there. Here we are. OK, just from here, just the beginning of the treasure trove. <gasps> I had found the holy grail, the oh, yeah, shoes. They do go on. Look, and they many, go on. many, many there were. Yes, yes. I know, I know, but they're still, look, they're in, in couples. You know, you haven't got them all mixed up. Close, 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 close. This is the happiest I have been. Since I think there's a pride in look how much we've screwed and look how many shoes I can get. There's a real pride in it because it does take savvy and uh, guts. And maybe that's really important in that, you know, like, but she seems to be walking through this Cinderella jelly you know, almost like God has deigned. She has permission to do this. She may have had a lot of them, but were they tasteful? That's all I want to say. You know, when I'm with somebody, I don't think about that I researched how many people the husband murdered. So I'm just facing this human being who is quite crazy. So I'm not judging her. I, the judgment was always gone, and I think they can feel that. So they don't feel like, oh, you know how those smug, uh, interviewers sometimes go trying to corner her. I was never cornering her. It was more like we were just girlfriends. Except I am sticking her with the knife underneath. The nerve of me. <laughs> <laughs> 